Hello and welcome to this lesson about compound inequalities. The learning target for this video is graphing, writing, and solving compound inequalities. So a compound inequality is two inequalities that are bound together. And what we have are two types. And so one type is what I like to call the and inequality, because when you say it out loud, it's something you'd say like and. And then the other one is or. And what's really important to note is that there's sort of like a picture that goes with each of these. And is this. It is what I like to call bounded. Whereas or is going to look more like this, and it's going to have a gap. And if we're in class, what I do is this really neat little hand gesture that kind of help make sense of this. So what I want you to do is hold your hands in front of you, and then when I say and, you point them together. So, and. Sorry about the creepy hand gesture, but that's how the and one works. And then with or, you go the, you, put, you point them away from each other. So uh, when I say or, you'll do that. Or. Please keep in mind, I'm not an artist, I'm a mathematician or a math teacher. Uh, so, but the, the hand gesture, you can hold your hands out in front of you for and have the fingertips touching, for or have them facing away. And that's what the uh, compound inequalities are gonna look like. And are bounded, they are, going, they are pointing towards each other, whereas the or, there's a gap. And what's also embedded in this is sort of a warning that you may have made a mistake. When, especially when it comes to solving and graphing, which is that, oops, let me erase that. There are no two same direction inequalities. So if you're doing some work, if you're graphing and solving and you have something that looks like this, you made a mistake somewhere. And one of these should be pointing the other direction. So uh, that's kind of a neat thing. Now let's talk about graphing them. So for graphing, the first thing you have to figure out is determine if you have an and or an or. So determine and or or. Because once you know that, you understand you're either going to have a graph or you're going to have a bounded graph or you're going to have a graph with a gap. And so uh, let's look at an example and let's say we're dealing with something like x is less than 2 or x is greater than 4. And this is what I mean. You know, like the word or is literally in here. So this is obviously an or compound inequality. So what that means is I'm going to have a gap. Now, these may be written in a different order and they may be swapped. So draw your number line, put the two numbers in question on that number line, and then think, you know, what is it telling you to do? It says x is less than 2. Well, that means we have open circle. And less means we're going to go to the left. And then we'll have an open circle for the four, and we're gonna to go to the right. And notice how they are pointing away from each other and leaving me with this nice big gap here. That's how you graph. And what could be kind of sneaky with these is, um, you know, again, like they're written the other way. So x is greater than or equal to five, and then x is less than negative one. They may not also be consistent with the type of inequality that you have. And so you have to think, you know, like what, what is it that's really asking me to do? And so make a number line, put the numbers in question on that line, negative one and five. And again, since I'm seeing or, I know it's gonna be a gap. I know it's gotta go the other way, but just pay attention. You know, we have a less than, so open circle. Here we have a greater than or equal to, so close circle and then the arrows go that way. Now with an and inequality, it's gonna be written in a slightly different format. It might look something like this. 3 is less than x, which is less than 10. And the thing is, if we were to break this up into two separate inequalities, we would get this. 3 is less than x. 3, oops, sorry, not 3. x is less than 10. And we would probably rewrite this guy to be x is greater than 3. Now that's a bit of a mouthful and that's kind of confusing. This is much easier to read. And here we can even see, you know, it's got a bound. It's going to be bounded by that number and it's going to go to that number. And so when we draw the graph for it, you know, we'll make our number line. You put the new two numbers in question, three and 10. And then you ask yourself, all right, open circle, closed circle. They're both open. So open circle, and then you connect them because for and it's supposed to be bounded. 
And again, if you look at it, this is saying I need X values that are greater than three. So something like five, but less than 10. And five would be not, not in the middle exactly right there, but roughly right there. And that works. So that's the area that gets graphed. Now, writing is just the opposite of graphing. So you'll be given a graph and some numbers on it. So let's say negative four and zero. And then let's go close circle, arrow that way, open circle, arrow this way. First thing you need to determine is what kind of graph you have. And so since there's a big gap there, this means this is gonna be an or. And so I just look at each one of these separately. What is this telling me? This is saying X is less than or equal to negative four. And this one is telling me that X is greater than zero. And I put an or there and I box it, I walk away. Same thing, oops, same thing if I have a different kind of inequality graphed. So let's just say I have negative 10 and negative five. Close circle, close circle. Now, since this one is bounded, this is going to correspond to an and, which means it's going to have the two less thans and an x. And this is easy. You just take the numbers, put it there, put it there. So negative 10 less than, oops, less than, and then check out the point here, less than or equal to x. And again, close circle, less than or equal to negative 5. So that's how you gra or that's how you write uh, compound inequalities. Again, it's all about looking at it and determining right off the bat: is it an and or is it an or? All right. Finally, let's talk solving. So here's where some things can get tricky, but um, we have a process. So if we're dealing with an or, you work separately. What you have is one problem has become two problems. If you're dealing with an and, that one you work, to, oops, not word, work together. Okay, so let's start off with our first example. Let's say we have three X plus one is less than negative eight, or five X plus two is greater than 12. So we have an or, and what we're just gonna do is treat this as two separate problems. So I'm gonna solve this inequality. I'll subtract one. Three X is less than negative nine, divide by three, and I, am getting, I end up getting X is less than negative three. This one, same thing, work with it separately. I'll subtract two. Five X is greater than 10, divide by five, x is greater than two. And then if I needed to, I could graph it by just focusing on these two uh, solutions, a number line, negative three, negative two, open circle, open circle, oh, not negative two, just positive two. Uh, and then since this is an or, I know they're gonna face away from each other like that. Let's do another example. This time with an and. So let's say I have negative seven less than or equal to two X plus three less than or equal to 11. So here we are gonna work with everything together. So I'm gonna focus in on the X. I need to get that by itself. The first thing I'll do is subtract three and I'm gonna do that on all three components. So I'll get negative 10 less than or equal to 2x, less than or equal to 8. And then I need to divide by 2. And again, I will do that everywhere, not just the one spot. So that gives me negative 5, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 4. And then I can graph it if I need to, or if I'm asked to. So negative 5, 4, close circle, close circle, connect them because it's an and. And finally, let's just talk about how this could be tricky. So there are a few ways that teachers or math tests can make this tricky for you. One is to have an or where both of them start going the same way. This is going to confuse you, making you think that they have to go um, 
plus 5 is greater than 21. Sorry, i got to focus there. Uh, this is going to confuse you, making you think that you made a mistake um, or that something is wrong with the problem here. So let's say we have something like this. Negative 2x plus 5 is greater than 21, and 4x plus 1 is greater than 1. You're noticing that these are the same, and so you're probably thinking, like, all right, when I plot this on a number line, they're both going to go this way. And that's not good. It shouldn't go like that. Well, the teacher and the test are seeing if you're going to catch that little detail right there. So you end up subtracting and solving. So we'll get negative 2x is greater than 16. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. You get x is less than negative 8 on this one. And so it flipped. Um, and so now we're dealing with inequalities that are going the different or different directions. You have a less than, and here you still have your greater than. Subtract 1, so we'll have 4x is greater than 0. Divide by 4, divide by 4, x is greater than 0. And so we're dealing with x values that are less than negative 8, but greater than 0. So that's how the or could be uh, tricky. Uh, they're banking that you're going to miss on that little detail there. And so it just boils down to attention to detail. The other way it can be tricky is with the and. And so we could do something like this. Negative 12 is less than negative 3x, which is less than or equal to 18. So for this, you need to divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3. When you do that, you end up getting 4 greater than, so notice how we have to flip the sign, x greater than or equal to negative 6. This looks weird. Now, the shortcut, the hack to this is being like it's an in, or it is a, uh, an and inequality, so it's bounded. You put the numbers in order, negative 6, 4, close circle, close circle, box it, or put a line between them, and you're done. Um, but if you want to go that step further to write it the next way, oh, actually, sorry, not, they're both not closed circles. I fell for my own little trap. <laughs> The negative 6 is on the right, and this is a closed circle. You might think you have to put the closed circle here. You don't. You put it with the negative 6. The 1 by the 4 is actually going to be an open circle. And so if you want to rewrite this, what you have to do is the peel off the sticker. And so it's where you have to flip it all the way around to where you get negative 6 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 4. And so now you've rewritten it in a way that makes this graph a little more obvious and easier to deal with. Again, the mistake people might make is just flipping the numbers and being like, I'm done. But that's not what you want to do. You have to do that whole peel the sticker where you kind of, you know, flip it all the way over uh, and do a complete 180 rotation. Um, so that way you end up getting this instead. Now these are the same, it's just that this is easier to read. So that's compound inequalities. Uh, good luck with your homework or practice, and let me know if you have any questions.